the three money practices for us as a couple, we save money together yeah. and we invest together. Basically, we save uh, every shilling that we have in one account. Our second money practice is that uh, we faithfully tithe. And when it comes to tithing, we don't tithe because uh, we have the money. But we tithe because you know that's a principle that works in the kingdom of God. And a couple of years ago, we sat down and asked ourselves, we know we cannot challenge God with what it comes to giving. And giving is a principle of life. So we decided that every two years we're going to be increasing our tithing by 10%. And as we speak today, we are at 30% where we faithfully tithe. Every month, 30%. And we are left with uh, 70, which we are grateful to God. We have practiced the fast food uh, giving in our marriage in such a special way. To us, is special and dear. Because I remember during the gathering last year, uh, Pastor M said that uh, we are a place where we need to free the future of our mother campus, which is Hill City. And he gave us the challenge of giving our one month January salary. Uh, when Pastor M said that, uh, and he gave me the figure, it was actually everything that we had. <laughs> and I remember looking at him, and the first question I ask is, so uh, how are we paying school fees? Uh, so how are we going to, to 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 pay for this loan that we have? So how are we? So mine was just question after question after question of how we are going to pay. And I remember the answer he gave me. He told me, God is going to provide. So immediately after, I get uh, someone sent me some photos of very nice houses, and what they told me is, kindly choose choose a house that you want to live in. I think three days later, the same person texts me again. Please tell me that you have decided on a house. <laughs> I would like to move you into one of these houses. I showed him again. And every other time I kept showing him, he's like, this is a joke. So what I decided is, let me look for this person, sit down with them so that I don't assume They've sent me a message, but you know, sometimes kids play with the phone. By the way, to be honest, that's what I was thinking. Maybe the child was with the phone and they were sending messages. So I looked for this person and I went and sat down with her and I told them, uh, you sent me something and I don't understand where it's coming from or are you selling houses and you're not telling me. They said, no, I would like to get you a house. I want you to move from where you are into a, a house, a good house. Because where we live, we live in our own uh, compound, but we've not built a permanent house. All he could say is, Mimi, is it jokes? Sipendi. Remember God telling uh, Pastor Victor, uh, if you deny this person to do whatever it is that I have told them to do, you're denying them a blessing. And I remember during the meeting, I sat down with them and I asked them, okay, fine. If this is what you hear God telling you to do. I want you to narrate to us your encounter with God. And the person sat down and explained how they felt God lead them to come to us, to have the conversation with my wife because she felt she's most comfortable to, to bring the uh, info to her. And, and they got to a place where they said, if you do not allow us to do this for you, you are blocking the blessings of God into our lives. And that is why we said, okay, fine, because we live at our own place, instead of moving us, why don't we start the journey that we have always dreamt to have as a couple, and that is to build our home. And as we speak here today, we are done with the foundation, we are done with the walling, and we have gotten to a place where we are about to put our slab and continue on uh, with the house. So we are grateful to God to having gotten ourselves to a place despite of the fear that we had. We became faithful, we became diligent and God provided. God has provided.